Mr. Speaker, in the wake of the horrific tragedy in Newtown, Connecticut, where 20 children were senselessly murdered, the issue of keeping children safe has been on the mind of all Americans. Since this tragedy occurred in, a school, in schools, districts and states have understandably focused co conversations on preventing and responding to violent crime that occurs in the school building itself. However, protecting children will require much more than preventing an outside intruder from committing acts of violence against students or a good emergency response plan to deal with the event. We need to recognize that violence or the fear of violence against children does not begin or end at the schoolhouse door. That's why I've devoted this month to introduce legislation that focuses on the safety needs of children as a national priority. First, I introduce legislation to establish minimum safety standards to prevent abusive seclusion and restraint practices in schools across the country. In keeping all, all students safe, act would protect school children from inappropriate uses of seclusion and restraint, provide school personnel with the necessary tools, training, and support to ensure the safety of all students and school personnel. These practices are at best cruel and at worst deadly. They, they continue to be used on children across the country. In Indiana, an eight-year-old girl with Down syndrome had her shoes duct taped painfully to her ankles because she refused to put her shoes on. In North Carolina, a 14-year-old boy with traumatic brain injury was confined inside a cardboard box as a form of timeout. In some cases, children have died from improper restraints and seclusion. My bill also would stop, uh, stop these abusive practices. Safety shouldn't stop at the schoolhouse door. The investigations conducted by the G G Government Accountability Office at my request in 2000, 2000, 2007, 2008 found that the private and public residential programs, including therapeutic boarding schools, wilderness camps, boot camps, and, and behavior modification facilities are not always run in a safe manner. Recently in Tampa Bay Times confirmed the problems of abuse and neglect continue with the stories of children being bruised, bloodied, and choked into unconsciousness as at these programs all in the name of discipline. More horrific stories of child abuse, including deaths in some cases, have been documented in seven state residential programs in just the past two years. Last week, I introduced the Stop Child Abuse and Residential Programs for Teens Act, a bill that would set basic health and safety standards that states would need to adopt to enforce and protect teens from physical, mental, and sexual abuse in these programs. It would also create easily accessible information for parents about the safety record of the programs so that parents can make sound decisions about if they want to send their child there or not. No one disputes that, that our schools and residential programs must be a safe place for children where they can focus on learning and improving their lives, not in fearing for their lives. Though some states have made progress developing pol policies to protect children from acts of violence, abuse, and neglect, a patchwork of protections riddled with holes is not acceptable when it comes to our nation's children. We cannot sit idly by as incidents of children being abused, and, 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 abused and, and, or killed continues to occur. And today I'm introducing legislation that pre prevent registered sex offenders and criminals convicted of crimes against children from working in schools. The Protecting Students from Sexual and Violent Predators Act would require public schools to conduct comprehensive background checks on any employee using state criminal or child abuse registries and the FBI's fingerprint database. It would also prohibit school districts from hiring or retaining anyone who has been convicted of certain violent crimes, including crimes against children, crimes involving rape or sexual assault, or child pornography. Mr. Speaker, keeping our children safe isn't a partisan issue. It's a moral obligation. This Congress, and must, this Congress must do more to protect our children. One way Congress can immediately help to ensure that, that students and schools have the support needed to address all aspects of violence to, is through the reauthorization of the Elementary Secondary Education Act. Through a bipartisan rewrite of the nation's education law, we can ensure that schools and students have the necessary support to provide key non-academic services essential to students to succeed in a safe and healthy learning environment. The L in, in the Elementary Secondary Education Act, Democrats will be fighting for these critical services, including other measures to promote safety, such as school services for violence prevention activities, bullying, harassment prevention, drug and alcohol abuse prevention, and programs to pre prepare for and to respond to natural disasters and emergencies in our school. Mr. Speaker, my last, on my last point, my thoughts continue to be with the victims and families of all of those who have suffered and continue to suffer from the terrible tragedy that took place in Oklahoma earlier this week. And we are just amazed and honored all of the efforts of school staff, teachers, and parents in trying to, trying to get children out of harm's way. And our hearts go out to those who were unsuccessful. 
I hope that Congress can support these communities in healing in every possible way. As always, keeping kids safe requires the coordinated efforts of children's principals, superintendents, community partners, and parents. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman's time has expired. The chair recognizes the gentleman.